Good morning, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, out here with my girls. And today on 5-Minute Chicken Tips, we're going to learn all about pecking order. Ah, what is pecking order? I've been doing some research on it because I think chicken psychology is absolutely fascinating and flock mentality and all of that stuff. So I'm going to do a video right now telling you guys about what I've learned and what I've observed with my flock so that you can kind of get an understanding whether you are new to chickens or you've got baby chicks or whatever the case may be for you. So pecking order is a real thing. It has now been attributed to a whole bunch of different species of animals, but of course it was first observed in chickens. And the idea of pecking order is that in order to keep a social hierarchy, you have an organized layout of who is the alpha, who's second in command, third in command, all the way down to who's bottom of the pecking order, which in the case of my flock is little Flopsy here. Hey, honey. Hey, tick, tick. I know. I'm betraying them because I came out without treats this morning. And it actually is really fascinating on why pecking order exists. I mean, you would think it's because, you know, the alpha wants to keep control and it's, you know, some kind of cruel reason like that. But actually, it's to make their lives a lot more simple and a lot more organized. And here's why. Out in the wild, chickens would ha not have to worry every single night about who's going to sleep where. And we get to a new grazing area and there's just total chaos because nobody knows who gets to eat first and there's always this battle like, you know, kids arguing in the back seat. With pecking order, it's understood of who gets to go first and who gets to go next and who gets to go last and everybody in between. And it's really, really interesting. Right, Lice? Pecking order usually, there's my foot, sorry. Pecking order usually stays the same throughout a chicken's life. But of course, as they get older, they can kind of decide if they want to try to challenge somebody who's up above them. And usually, if they were going to, oh, look at that stretch lace. If they were going to challenge somebody, chickens can kind of eyeball the contender or eyeball the challenger or the challengee and see, okay, this bird is a similar size to me. So I'm going to try to, you know, hop up one or two rungs of the ladder or this chicken is way bigger than I am. So I'm not going to bother. If you've got roosters, roosters may be the alpha, but they're not necessarily the alpha. Sometimes you will have an alpha hen, even if males are present. And if you don't have any roosters, like in my flock, you do still have a pecking order, but obviously everybody from top to bottom is going to be a hen. Another thing that I found that was really fascinating is that a perfect flock out in the wild is usually between 10 and 20 birds. If it's smaller than that, then, you know, the pecking order still exists. But if it's bigger than 20 birds, the pecking order can't really be established as, as concrete as you would like. And so there can still be some chaos and confusion and a little bit of pandemonium. So I would think it would be really fascinating for people who have, you know, free ranging chickens, but you have like upwards of like 50 or 100 birds. I wonder what that pecking order looks like. I wonder, do chickens, you know, group themselves into like smaller flocks within the big flock so that they can each have their own little social system? I'm curious about that. But the ideal size for a flock in the wild is between 10 and 20. And then that way they can keep the control and the order, right? What do you hear, girls? Oh, I was making lots of noise. What is it? Another thing that I've done in my research over the last few weeks as I'm preparing for this video is that if your alpha chicken has an offspring, they have a chick, then that chick will automatically assume the alpha position when they come of age. So it is sort of like a royal bloodline. And unfortunately, if the guy down on the bottom of the totem pole has offspring, then by default, they will assume the place of the bottom of the pecking order unless they challenge each other. So what does it mean when you're alpha? The two main things have to do with sleep and with food. Now, if you're out in the wild or, you know, your chickens are allowed to mate on their own, then it may have to do with that as well. I don't have roosters, so that's not something I can really talk about. But for sure, when chickens get a treat or when one of them catches a bug or, in, you know, I bring treats in here, they get a new plant, you know, whatever the case may be, the alpha is going to come and check it out first and then she gets dibs. My alpha is Calypso, who is the black hen over on your right, who's walking away. And we'll talk more about my flock and their dynamic here in just a minute. 
But the other thing has to do with sleep. And I think this would be fascinating. Like why can I not get like a college degree in chicken psychology? Because I think it's just so cool. My roosts, let me show you, are not really set up for sleep where my birds, my roosts are not really set up for sleep where my birds have like a, the rungs of a ladder where you can really easily visually see the pecking order. Um, and ironically, my Alpha Calypso, she has always been a nesting box sleeper. And as she's gotten older, I've kind of given up. So she actually sleeps down there unless I scoot her little butt out. But everybody else, as you can see, they sleep equal. But if I was able to build a larger chicken coop, one like the size of a shed, I would do like the rungs of a ladder style where it's like a half of an A-frame and everybody sleeps on like a step like that. And in that case, you get to visually see the layout of their pecking order because traditionally the alpha sleeps the farthest off the ground, right? I get the best position away from any predator who might come and try to grab me when I'm asleep. And as you go down the rungs of the ladder down towards the ground, you're going down in the pecking order until the guy at the bottom of the order or the girl, oh, Callie's got to go inspect what I did. She, I, she thinks I probably messed something up. Then at that point, then the hens or the roosters down at the bottom rungs are the ones who are on the bottom of the pecking order. So you can visually see it by how they sleep. Now on my flock, Calypso, who's in there complaining right now, Calypso has always been the alpha ever since they were really young. And she is also the only one out of my current flock who I got from a baby, baby chick. She was, I think, five days old when I got her. And in her personality, she's always been very independent, very like, I don't have to stay with the other chickens. I'm going to go wander off and do my own thing. I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't care what you have to say. But those of you who are raising chicks right now, after you watch this video, go watch your chicks for a while and let me know when, how, like how old they are when you start observing pecking order type stuff. Because I don't feel that a group of all chicks, you know, when there's not any adults present, that a group of all chicks will start exhibiting pecking order type stuff for a while. Um, if they're in a brooder and you know everybody's getting the same food and we're in a really small spot and there's not really like higher and lower places to sleep, they may not start establishing a pecking order until they're a little bit older. So I'm curious about that too. So normal pecking order behavior is there will be, I mean, and it can kind of hurt your heart if you're like me and you're an empath and you're like, I just want everybody to get along, you know, nobody fight and nobody be mean to each other. But pecking order is a necessary thing. It's necessary for their instincts and it's going to happen, you know, whether you want it to or not. And of course, we cannot constantly be out and monitoring our chickens every second of every day. So it's going to happen. But a normal pecking order action is it's always going to be happening from their beak. Um, that's how chickens learn about their world. That's what I tell my kids. That's what they that's what they use to inspect stuff to clean themselves. Now, roosters, when roosters are fighting, roosters will jump forward and they can use their, their talons or their claws like that. But for pecking order sakes, that doesn't happen. They use their beak and they literally peck at each other. And it can be the back of the head or it could be tail feathers or it just kind of depends on where the, the birds are standing. And that is normal pecking order. If it gets to the point where one or a couple of birds are being bullied to where you see blood, They've got bald spots from being constantly pecked and having feathers ripped out. So in other words, not just a jab, but like I'm actually grabbing your feather and I'm pulling it out. Or where your chicken cannot like leave the coop, you know, because they're so afraid or because they're being, you know, blockaded inside. Or where your chicken cannot access food or water. All of those things is where you need to intervene. But, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But otherwise, there is going to be a little bit of normal pecking. It's kind of like, you know, like I said, watching or listening to your kids griping in the back seat. You know, every every once in a while, they're going to kind of gripe at each other. They're going to kind of nag. He hit me. She touched me. Nah, 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 nah. It kind of happens. And you've got to let it happen because that's how they, they're going to work that out. And they're going to work it out whether you want them to or not. Right, girls? And once the, the hierarchy has been established, usually that's that's it. There's not going to be a constant changing and challenging like it, it is what it is. Interestingly, let me tell you a couple more things I've learned about, about my flock. Um, so my pecking order, like I said, Calypso, who's digging a hole? Calypso has always been my alpha. And, you know, like I said, the rest of my original, original flock from years ago has passed away or, you know, has been rehomed. And then I got... Lacey and Gracie. And then I got these two brown girls who are my Easter eggers. 
interestingly enough, you know, and of course, whoever you add in who's the new guy is always going to start out at the bottom, right? And then they kind of shuffle themselves in where they belong. Blue actually moved herself up to where I feel like she was second or third in the hierarchy out of the five. And then she got ill, but I had her quarantined close to, but, you know, away from the flock for a few weeks and she lost her spot. And so now she's probably number four in the hierarchy where she had been two or three, but removing her from the equation did bump her down. So her spot got taken in her absence. And Calypso, you know, I, you guys, if you've seen my other videos, you know, I talk about Callie, how she's my camp counselor. You know, if something new comes in or if there's a potential threat, you know, they hear something, a hawk flies overhead or whatever. Callie's the one who's like the guardian. And then in the morning, she's the first one down, down the ramp in the morning, waiting for the door to open. And in the evening, you know, everybody comes in and has like their last little snack or whatever, and they start going to bed. Interestingly, the girls on the bottom of the pecking order go to bed first. And then Calypso, sometimes she literally comes out and like makes a final lap around the coop. Like she's checking attendance, you know, she's doing a roll call to make sure nobody's out of bed. And then she goes up last. Now, if you do have a problem with bullying or like, okay, this is out of hand. I do feel like I need to step in and do something. You, there's a couple of easy things you can do to stop a bully. And then there's some other stuff that's more work. So let's talk about this really, really briefly. And I'm always here to help if you have questions or you want to send me an email or, um, you know, you're, you are concerned you may need to intervene. Just let, let's talk about it in the comments. But the quickest and easiest thing you can do with either a rooster who's getting too aggressive or a hen or, you know, somebody who's just kind of being a jerk and you feel like this is beyond the normal pecking order. This is beyond you know, their instincts and things like this, you're just kind of being a creep and I need to stop it. The quickest, easiest thing to do is to catch your chicken by both legs. And you want to, um, it, it's up to you if you want to, to hold them further up on the leg or down closer by their feet. I usually try to hold them further up. You hold both legs together and you hold the bird upside down. And you don't need to do it for like 10 minutes or anything like that. I mean, you don't want to have all the blood rushing to their head. They will go a little bit catatonic. They'll flap around for a second, but it's sort of a, oh, See, now that hurts my heart because I love my bluebird, but that's a normal pecking order. Callie, for whatever reason, didn't like her there, but no harm done. No feathers are gone. There's no blood. It's not like blue can't eat or drink or anything like that. Now see, Gracie is in my mind second. So this is, I think, first and second in my pecking order. So Callie's not going to really challenge anything there, but you hold your bird upside down and it's sort of like a public shaming I'm kind of reminding them and kind of putting them in their place. Like, no, you're not the boss. Really, I am. I'm the alpha. And then the other thing you can do that I normally do, because I don't like to hang her upside down for too long. And I have to do this for Callie once every couple of months. Um, the other thing you can do is put them in the crook of your arm, still holding the feet. So like I have, I'm going to try to show you. I have like her head would be to your left, like in my the crook of my elbow. And then I'm holding her body here against me. And then my other hand is holding her feet. Um, and then I just rock her like a baby and they will kind of go catatonic. They'll start to doze off. But what you want to do is just kind of shock them out of, out of that behavior they were doing in that moment and kind of remind them like, no, knock it off. But if you're having to do that multiple times a day, or you have to do that even once every couple of days and you feel like, oh, Gracie got something and you feel like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> and you feel like, okay, I've been grabbing them and doing like the little shaming thing, rocking like a baby, whatever, and it's not working, then I would suggest the next extreme thing, and I have a whole bunch of videos on this about chicken behavior, about quarantining the bully for a couple of weeks. Because like I said, if you remove them from the flock, you remove them from the equation, someone else is going to take their place. It's not like, oh, our alpha is gone. We are just going to be without a leader for two weeks. That's not going to happen. Someone else is going to step up. And so then your bird... You know, it's not violent or anything, but your bird is being removed from the equation. And then when you put them back in a few weeks later, haha, -ha, you don't have the same position you have anymore. And so everything gets sort of shifted around. If you have a crazy bully chicken who is just out of control, you know, there's other chickens that are bloody and they can't eat. And it's just, you know, just insane. And you've tried quarantining and you have to do it for like at least a week. It's not just an overnight thing, which I know is inconvenient and it's a pain. But after that, if you still have a problem with a bully, you might want to see about trading them with somebody else for a completely different chicken, like get them to a completely new flock. And I know that's really sad. Crazy birds. Um, the last thing I'll suggest, because I'm starting to look into hopefully adding to our flock. 
in the next couple of months is when you do add new birds, yes, they're gonna start at the beginning of the pecking order. And yes, you do need to keep them quarantined for a minimum of like one or two weeks. And that's for diseases and that's for, you know, the social reasons and everything else. But I would not ever add just one chicken by themselves. I would add, you know, my flock is five. I would add two or three birds at the same time. And that way you're not gonna have one new guy being constantly bullied and picked on. Does that make sense? It's a lot harder to bully when it's five against three as opposed to five against one. I'm digging in the lilac over here. So that's been way longer than five minutes. Oops. About everything with pecking order. I mean, I think it's just really fascinating how our chickens, you know, they have those instincts and they just kind of know what to do. You can visually see the pecking order, you know, when they get a treat or when they go up to bed. So I'm excited to see what you guys think, if you've learned anything, what you observe with your own flocks. And like I said, I'm always here to help with anything. Um, be sure you're checking out all of our other five minute chicken tips. I have a very fascinating video on chicken poop <laughs> that you should check out. And I'm always here to help. So thanks so much for watching.